Well, came over and drilled on top of that school. Yeah, I'd say. There's some fish there's, down there's there. There's a couple of fish. Yep. Got one. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to NB Edits. Today, Nick and I are out here on the hard water, and I am working him like a rented mule right now. <laughs> Check it out. Got him pulling the sled and everything for me. I got nothing. I'm not even wearing a backpack right now. Living luxurious this morning. We got the sun coming up behind us over here. And I'll tell you what, guys, we are ready to start pounding some panfish. We're gonna be chasing big crappies and possibly even some perch this morning. And we're gonna be doing a little challenge video for you guys. So let's go ahead. We're gonna continue walking all the way to the spot. We're the only ones on the lake this morning. Let's get right into it and fill you guys in on what today's challenge is going to be. Well, made it to the spot. Now in today's video, what we are gonna be doing is as you can tell by this, well, you probably can't tell until I open it, but in here, we got some plastics. Bunch of assortment of plastics. And then, in this pocket, we got, hold on, some wax worms. What we're gonna be doing is Brandon and I are gonna be fishing side by side with the Garmin Live Scope today. And we're gonna be truly testing which one works better, live bait or plastics. We've done this challenge a lot of times on the channel and pretty much so as everybody else. But it is a fun challenge. You guys do seem to enjoy it. And it is interesting seeing which one they hit. Now, the last time we did this challenge, we actually did it where we like went separate ways using different stuff. Today, we're literally gonna be side by side using the same exact thing. The only thing different is live bait versus plastic. So what I'm gonna be doing, pretty sure I'm on the spot right now. I got a pinpoint on my Garmin marked, but I'm gonna drill some holes. We are looking for a crib. And if we can find that, we're gonna find the crappies. So let's get after it. So it seems like everybody knows about this spot already because there's a freaking grid i mean there's like 50 holes but i got the garment set up right where i believe the crib is and magically there's a hole here not sure exactly how well this is going to work drilling on top of somebody else's hole <laughs> all right actually that was pretty smooth we're going to drop the garment down see how close we are all right <clears throat> Get the live scope mode going here. Gonna have to, oh yeah, okay, we're right on top of it. I got it in down mode right now, as you can see right here, pretty much four to 14 feet out is that crib. We're right down here. And you can see on the top of it, there are some crappies. So we're probably gonna have to drill a little bit to my right, but we found the crib. Thankfully, somebody had their hole here, but I would have had the GPS coordinate anyways. But uh, yeah, there's there's fish on it, so we're not gonna spend too much time. We're gonna drill some holes and get on top of these fish. Oh boy. There we go. First fish. Just got set up too. Look at that. There we go. First crappie of the day. I am using plastics right now. Currently waiting for Brandon to get his rod all rigged up and get with live bait. But when we found the crib here, notice there's a lot of fish, so I grabbed a rod real quick and decided to start a little early. That one came on over and slapped it right away. So we're gonna send it back down. See if we can get another one. Got him. That one came up and smoked it. I am caught. On the crib. Ooh, that's <laughs> no good. No. There we go. Decent little bluegill there. Came up and just slapped that tungsten jig. That one was on the live bait. They're acting very finicky down there and that's because they're bluegills. That first one that you had came in just came up and thumped it, man. That's awesome. Crappies are gonna do that. Perch will too, a lot of times. I would say as far as being finicky, I would much rather crappie fishing because uh, they're not finicky, almost ever. They come up and just slam it. Then I would say, eh, perch, sometimes they have their day. The bluegills, man, a lot of times when we go out fishing, those things are picky, very finicky, but that one came up and just crushed that live bait. Waxworm one, plastics one. There we go, got him. 
Oh, did he just come off? No, I set the hook like a champ too. Oh, oh man, how did I miss that guy? Oh, I have one on, I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> wow, it must be nice. I can't get a bite to save my life. At least a little crappy. I was watching that mark that was on you. He came all the way up for you. How the heck did that fish not hit? All right, there we go. Slap the old tungsten jig. Little crappie. I'd say oh. he was fairly aggressive. There you go. Oh. oh! All right, that's two for the live bait. Ooh, there we go. Okay, decent little bluegill. Not an absolute giant, but a little piggy. That one came on that blue, white, and silver tungsten jig. So far, what we're noticing is that, whoo, these fish, even though they're uh, jumping around on us here as they are coming out of the water, they're very finicky when they're down there on that crib. I'll show you guys what I'm using there. Blue, white, and silver tungsten jig. Again, just a little wax worm. Pick them up at the bait shop, pick them up at the gas station, whatever the case might be. Uh, seems to be the ticket this morning. Nick's going to stick to the plastics. Maybe, uh, maybe in a little while he'll switch it up and try the live bait with me just to confirm it for himself. I may switch over to the plastics. I don't know how much time I'm gonna have myself because I do have to work this morning, but we're gonna stay out here and just try and grind as long as we can and maybe see if we could do some hole hopping and find some crappies. Seems like all the fish that are below us right now. And as you can tell, oh, right here is put into forward mode. You can see this is a crib. And we got right here, 80 feet out. 80 feet out. All these lines, those are all crappies. Yeah. So pretty much confirms what Brandon was saying. Yeah. That they're roaming. Yeah, they're roaming. So we're probably gonna have to drill on top of that. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to go over there, drill on top of that. What we noticed earlier is that these fish were just zooming. Um, we drilled a couple holes actually out behind us a little ways earlier, and uh, as soon as we would put the Garmin down, boom. They were already 20, 30, 40, 50 feet gone. So these fish are moving this morning. So we're gonna try and uh, do some hole hopping, try and chase some of these fish down, and let's just see if we can get into them. Came over and drilled on top of that school. Yeah, I'd say. There's some fish there's, down there's there. There's a couple fish. Holy cow, they are moving though. They are moving quick. Wow. Yep, got one. Let's see what these are. Are they perch, are they bluegill, are they crappie? Could be a little mixture of all three. Ooh, this one's a bluegill. Okay, interesting. So it looks like about half of the school that we just drilled on is already gone. Maybe even more than half of the school. And it looks like they're pushing into the water behind us here. Not exactly sure what they are looking for. Uh, once you get out into this deeper spot, it just turns into kind of a flat. The spot that we were fishing in was about 85 90 feet away before that's the power of the garmin you can just find those schools right away and uh man look at that now these fish are all going the opposite direction holy yeah. cow you can tell on the screen you remember how i showed you now look there's, at that. there's none <laughs> there's none pretty They're much gone. that whole school is gone okay well i'm gonna go ahead and uh just reel this up we're gonna put it in forward mode and just start scanning, see if we can get on top of them again. These schools are moving fast. Well, things have turned south extremely quick. One, Brandon's gotta to go to work, so he has to leave. Two, Garmin unit died, so we love that. Uh, luckily he has a flasher, so I'm, I'm gonna to have to use that. But like I said, he's gotta to go to work. I'm gonna use the flasher. I'm still gonna, I guess, chase these schools around the best I can and uh, see what happens, but Definitely seems like the live bait is working. Still gonna see if I can get a few on plastics just because I like crappie fishing with plastics, mainly because like when they're moving that fast, you don't have time to like rebait your hook every single time. It's nice to just be able to drop down, know your plastic is on. It stays on a little longer than a waxy does. So still gonna try that. But if they are being that finicky, I'm gonna have to just switch the live bait and see if that works out for me. Well guys, I'm going to be completely honest with you. So, I have not picked up the camera quite a long time. As you can see, I'm using Brandon's flasher right now, and it's a lot different than my live scope. But, luckily, before my live scope did die, I did kind of mark an area where there was a big school of crappies. So, came on over with the flasher, and they're down there. So 
Shouldn't be too long here. There we go. I'm still using plastics right now, just because when I do get on a school, like I was saying, I like to be able to just unhook it, just like so, drop the fish down, and I know my plastic is still on the jig perfectly fine. So then I can just drop right back down on top of them. Now granted with live bait you can do that, but there is a chance that they could take your waxy or rip it off or something stupid like that. And even if you think they wouldn't move in that little bit of time, some of these schools move so fast that if you're not right back down there, then they're just gonna leave. So you gotta keep them entertained. And really the tungsten and the plastic is like the perfect combo for doing that. There's another one. Finally, figuring out something here. There's a better crappie. This one inhaled it. Not like super big or anything, but decent little crappie. Best one of the day probably so far for me. Get a release on them. See if I can capitalize. There's one. Seems a little better. Probably the best one of the day so far. Yeah, I'd say so. Probably like a nice 10 incher, which would be perfect eating size if I was keeping fish, but I do have to work today, really don't feel like cleaning any, so we're just out here catching them, having some fun. So, real quick, just want to show you guys how many marks I'm getting on my Markham. If I jig up, you can see me up a little higher. This is kind of where I've been keeping it. And then most of these fish down here really aren't interacting. When I stay up here, you'll get maybe the most aggressive one coming in from like right here up. Otherwise, some of these bigger ones have been coming in right up above all of these. And those are what seems to be the bigger ones so far. Let me show you guys what I'm using today. Now, this is a four millimeter tungsten jig that is black and neon green specs from Frostbite. And then, as you can see, I'm using a mustache worm. Not exactly sure on the brand, but it is black in color. And that is the plastic that is getting it done for me so far. I am going to see if I can catch a few more fish for you guys. I just watched the footage and just realized that I wasn't even in frame. Like, the top of my head wasn't even in frame for when I was catching all those crappies. So I'm going to readjust my camera angle, try to catch a few more before I got to leave. Uh, fortunately, I got to go to work, you know. Somebody's got to pay the bills around here, so that's going to have to be me. But like I said, I'm going to try to catch a few more fish for you guys and then probably end the day. There we go. Here's a little better. Let's see. Let me show you guys. Pretty much cookie cutter of all the other bigger ones that I've had today. But they are fun to fight on this ultralight, like a noodle style rod, which is basically always what I run. I got one screaming up at it. This one's gonna come hit. Just like that. Another decent crappie, maybe a little bit smaller than the last couple, but I can't even believe how big this school is. I know I showed you guys what I was using as far as the jig and plastics, but we also do get a lot of comments showing you guys what the setup is actually when we come to jigging. So this is a 26 inch fast ultralight. Now this is pretty much like a power noodle is what they call it, but this is a custom NB Edits rod that uh, my buddy actually made for me. Absolutely love it. The first about like five, six inches is super, super ultra light. I mean, I can see anything. As you can tell, even just with this four millimeter, this thing is slightly bent. So even just the slightest touch, I can see it. And then when it flexes, you got about six inches and then you're straight to backbone. All of this is enough backbone to where you can fight those bigger fish. I got three pound fluorocarbon. And then for the reel, I am using an inline. Now you guys have been seeing me use this on the channel 
quite a bit. This is my first inline reel that I have ever owned. I really was kind of skeptical just because I didn't really know how to use them. But with the quick strike lever and just like the free fall ability and then how smooth it is, it's definitely a game changer. Definitely glad that I have this rigged up. Now this reel is actually from PC Fun. If you guys aren't familiar with them, I will leave a link down in the description. But this is basically what we're going to be running from here on out open water and ice fishing so definitely go ahead check them out they're very very affordable reels and the quality is very good you won't find them in stores so they're online only so again if you guys want to check them out link down in the description i'm going to see if i can catch a few more crappies i'm really really limited on time wish i didn't have to work but uh unfortunately you know that's just the way it goes so hopefully you guys are enjoying the video so far i'm going to see if i can clap a few more crappies and then I'm going to have to head out. There's another one. Another decent little crappie. That entire time, all of those fish, I'm still using that same plastic that I've been using all day. I have not switched once, which is the beauty of using plastics versus live bait. But what I would say is for you guys to always go into fishing having both. Never hit the lake without them because even the best fishermen will tell you that uh, it is very important to have live bait because sometimes no matter what you do or how many times you change plastics or jigs, those fish are just not gonna bite. So having live bait is just a nice little backup plan in case plastics aren't working for crappies or just really any fish in general. Uh, it's always nice to have it just because chances are if they're being finicky or biting light, they're gonna bite live bait. Here comes another. And I ripped his lip. He might eat again though. Yep. I was gonna say I didn't I didn't hurt him that bad. This one seems better. Best one of the day maybe. Oh for sure. Probably the best crappie of the day. Probably, I'd say 12 inches or so. Nothing too big, but this one's definitely thicker than the other ones. On that note, that is probably gonna be the last fish for me. I'm going to have to pack everything up and head on out, unfortunately. But, did catch a lot of fish. Uh, it always seems to happen when Brandon ends up going to work is when I start clapping fish, which that sucks to be him. But I do have to also go to work, so I'm gonna have to wrap this up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you guys are subscribed because we are going to be posting a ton of ice fishing. We're really trying to keep this three upload schedule. I know we didn't upload on Tuesday, but uh, trust me, we tried to get out here and film. Just, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. That's fishing and we do have full-time jobs. So trying to do YouTube on the side has really been a struggle but uh, you guys have really been keeping us motivated and keeping us on the grind and we absolutely love it so hopefully you guys enjoyed today's content also please in the comment section let us know some ideas of what you guys would like to see give us a list because we are willing to do it and with doing three videos a week it is getting kind of hard to figure out what you guys want to see what we should film we are going to be doing some camping on the ice so expect that in the near future but if you guys have anything else that you'd like to see leave it down in the comments i'm going to wrap things up i got to get to work because i can't be late and i will see you guys on the next one tight lines from nb edits